Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to uh, continue on with exceptions and then get into some uh, other what you could consider advanced topics uh, including binary files in this video. Uh, but we're going to kind of finish up with exceptions and then get into working with binary files. Uh, and so we kind of left off uh, where we can write our own custom exception classes in the last video and we had a bank account class where we threw an illegal argument exception. But, you know, that might not meet the need of um, of our application you know we can't throw an illegal argument exception every single time it might not you know just because it's an illegal value it might not be specific enough for what we need and so you know to meet the needs of your application you might need to create your own uh, exception classes and the way you do that is by extending uh, uh, the exception class or one of its subclasses so um, do that by extending exception or one of its subclasses and uh, we're gonna go ahead and simply extend exception and then just do this demonstration where we throw uh, uh, an exception of a class that we created instead of throwing an illegal argument exception we're going to throw an exception of the class that we create. So let's go ahead and create our class. And we'll just call this negative balance. That's going to be the name of our class. And we're going to extend exception. And so this is how you uh, create a class called negative balance exception. It's now, we have now created an exception class. And over here, we're going to throw that exception if the balance becomes negative. And so in this class, uh, we're going to go ahead and create a couple of constructors. Um, one is the noarg constructor. Public. And uh, this will this uh, another constructor uh, will accept you know the balance. So this constructor and we'll use that in the message to the end user. And we'll call it say double balance. And um, what we simply do is we we pass the error message up to the parent class constructor by using the uh, constructor call super. Uh, and on this one, we will simply say. You cannot have a negative balance. An error occurred. You cannot please just a generic error message here. And on this one, we'll call super, giving it the same message. But this time we'll say your balance was okay. So now we've created our class, and let's just try to throw new negative negative balance, and this obviously uh, calls the no arg constructor and we have a checked exception so since this is a checked exception um, we need to either handle it here or pass it up uh, in this case i will throws negative balance so that in the driver uh, we'll go ahead and create a bank account 
set the balance to a negative value and I'll wrap that in a try and catch and you can see here right away it says hey there's an unhandled exception here I'm going to try catch I guess in my naming convention to stay consistent negative balance exception would have been a better name for my class but that's hindsight here and uh, if I get the message here this will come all the way from here because I called the no arg constructor here. If I run it, you see an error occurred. You cannot have negative balance. Please contact your system administrator. Now, if I call the, uh, the constructor with a parameter, I can pass in balance, which will call the constructor here and it'll pass that balance um, up in our error message. And so if I demonstrate that, now you can see your balance was negative $5, which we try and set it here. Whatever the number is that we put in should come across. Well, trunk eight zeros. There you go. Okay, so that is working with our own custom exception classes. That's creating them that is throwing them, that's having them bubble up the call stack, and catching them. Okay, so uh, moving on to the next topic is working with binary files. And you might wonder why binary? You know, why binary files? Well, first off, you know, you know binary is just a bunch of ones and zeros. So why would we want to store data in a file as a bunch of ones and zeros? Well, the answer to that is that it's more efficient. Uh, and so, you know, obviously if you store a letter A as some combination of ones and zeros, um, that's not efficient for human eyes. Like it, it's really not beneficial for us to look at any sort of binary data. But it's more efficient uh, when only uh, for computers, right? So um, when when a human is reading it, it's not more efficient. So it's it's more efficient when a computer reads a binary file. So if you're if you're uh, sending information between a computer uh, and another computer, you know it's more efficient to store that information in binary. It does not make sense to take that raw data ones and zeros and translate it into some some sort of characters. It's more efficient when working with when working only with computers you know so text files are for human eyes and binary files are for exchanging information between computer programs um, and so that's kind of a little theory behind why would we even work with binary files so um, the first thing is um, writing to binary files, if we're going to take information from our program out of our variables, out of our arrays, out of a database and write it to some sort of binary file, you know, uh, the first thing you need to do is have this import Java IO star so that we can work with a couple of classes and those classes being the uh, file output stream and the data output stream. Now, the file output stream allows you to open a binary file, and this allows you to write to a binary file. And so the syntax for opening it will call our object as stream. And we're going to call this a uh, my info dot dat uh, so a dot dat you know that's not a dot you know text or uh, Excel spreadsheet like you're used to um, this is this signifies um, raw data ones and zeros 
Okay, and then we'll write it with the data output stream. We'll just call this output file equals like new output stream. And call it f stream. Don't forget your semicolons in the right places. Capitalization is important. I'm going to take this off just to show you something in a little bit. Actually, right away. Uh, unhandled if exception type file not found exception. So right away you could see that uh, there's a potential to throw an exception. So uh, you can ratchet in, uh, wrap it in a try and catch block or throws file not found exception. And that handles that. Uh, so if you want to handle that, it's up to you. Otherwise, put the throws clause on. Just to demonstrate this, uh, I'm going to create an integer array called numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then I'm going to use a for loop. Start at 0. Well, Numbers.length. Increment your counter. Output file dot write. And you can see a lot of the methods here. Write, byte, write, int, short, write UTF, which we'll talk about write UTF and what that's purposed for in a, in a future video. Write double, write float, write long. Since we have an array of integers, I'm going to write int. And numbers sub i. And now we have an unhandled exception type IO exception. So you saw when we worked with the file output stream was a potential file not found exception that would be thrown with the output stream. But then when we work with the uh, data output stream and we call the write int method, another exception could happen, which is IO exception. So if we change this to IO exception, IO exception is a, a parent of them both, so it will handle the data output stream exception and the file output stream exception. So because of inheritance, uh, this will work. And let's go ahead and close our uh, stream here. You can see the little warning here, hey, you're not closing this. I can get that to play nice output file is never closed so let's go ahead and close output file dot close okay now if we run our program you know we're still getting the error from before uh, however you know we might do a just a little successful message here saying, hey, we successfully created the binary file. Now, uh, if I pop open my uh, file explorer here, and uh, I'm going to navigate to my users directory, my user, and in here I've got my workspace for Eclipse, chapter 10. You could see the .dat file that was created today at 9.17 a.m., which is what time it is right now. Uh, if you right-click this and open it in an editor, it's going to look like gibberish, you know, which is expected. This is not for human eyes. This is, you know, one program were to write a file, another program were to read a file. It would be more efficient for those programs to write and read binary. So let me go ahead and close this just to show you what the binary file looks like. Then the next uh, step is to read files. Uh, to read files, we're working with file input stream and data input stream. And very similar to the previous uh, objects that we were working with, or classes, this will open a file for reading binary data. Um, 
and provide basic functionality for reading bytes. And this one will allow you to read any primitive type. or string from a binary file. And they're going to work together just as in the previous classes. So let's go ahead and create our objects. And we're reading my info dot diet dot dat. And we're going to call this the input file equals new data input stream passing it f stream now this is airing out because we, we named our variables the same so I'll just call this f stream 2 and I'll provide a uh, little message here system so I need to go ahead and create a couple variables here uh, to work with. One's a flag, uh, which is a boolean variable called end of file. I'm going to set it to false initially. Um, so you can see while it's initially false, but the not makes it true. So the first time going through this, this while loop will run. I'm also going to just make a number variable to hold an int. Hold an int. Uh, while loop flag and in here I'm going to put a try and a catch block and we're going to catch an end of file exception so uh, we need to obviously cause that to occur in the try block so I'm going to say number equals input file read int and so this is where we actually go into our file and read the int now it's num not number and then we'll just print the number out uh, the number Okay, so obviously we wrote to a file before. We wrote to the file, now we're reading from the file. And then if this exception happens to occur, or when it occurs, we'll set our flag to true, which will cause the loop to end. Then we'll close the file. Input file dot close. And we should have read from the file. So let's run this. And we created the binary file and then we're reading the numbers from the file and in our loop here, inside of our while loop, we're doing a print line saying the number is a bunch of time, one, two, three, four, five, and then we print out done. So in this example, we showed you uh, going all the way back to how to create your own ex custom exception classes and then we talked about why work with binary files and we talked uh, demonstrated how to write a binary file and how to read from a binary file